Hello and welcome to this slightly different video on editing techniques and workflow methods in regards to creating abbreviated or abridged versions of pre-edited productions. Now, you may have noticed a while ago that I released my short film Husky, and that was followed up a few months later by a 15-minute cut of Husky. And you might be thinking, well, why wasn't the original 15 minutes? And that's because... First of all, I just wanted to put out the story that I wanted to tell. Then I wanted to try and create the most concise version of the film possible while still maintaining the essence, because not everyone wants to sit down and watch a 20 minute film, albeit not everyone wants to sit down and watch a 15 minute film, but the five minutes is enough for some people to say, you know what, I will invest some time watching this, because it's hard getting a sustained audience for that entire duration of film, on sites like YouTube, when the majority of videos are about two or three minutes long at best. So, what we're going to do is consider mm -hmm. what I went through to create this abridged version of Husky in the context of a recent production which I did, uh, which was Silent Studios' Resident Evil trailer, um, which there are three versions of. Now, one of the things I'm going to encourage you to do is to go and watch the three different cuts of the Resident Evil trailer that Silent Studios produced, on which I worked as the editor. Now, Silent Studios produced some great horror theme content, so it's definitely worth checking them out and subscribing. Uh, all the links necessary for the, to follow along to this video are in the description. So, the director's cut may not be up right this moment, but it will be up very soon. At the moment, what is definitely up is the one minute version and the 30 second version. You can see I've got three tabs here in Premiere Pro. Um, why did I edit in Premiere Pro when I create so many Final Cut tutorials? Um, very simply, I invested in CS6 a while ago because I'm a big fan of After Effects and Photoshop and I wanted to give Premiere Pro a chance on one of my bigger productions. So this is me using Premiere Pro as part experiment, um, part getting used to the tools and seeing how well they're integrated, especially because there were some considerable a considerable number of basic visual effects in this software, in um, this video. I knew it would be handy to be able to send clips to After Effects and you can see all these clips that are pink here are clips that I've sent to After Effects and then have come back to Premiere Pro so you can see with that many clips going to Premiere, um, to After Effects it's definitely worth um, using Premiere Pro. So first of all I cut the long trailer and that is the director's cut. Now, remember, I'm not going to play this whole thing back to you um, because I can't upload the whole video. So go ahead and watch all the videos and then jump straight back into this video. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Just pause this video. And some of you are probably just watching anyhow, so we'll just carry on and get started. So in this long trailer, the, you can see that the running time is about just over three minutes. What you have to ask yourself is, what is the narrative arc, if there is one, what is the narrative arc you're trying to tell? Essentially what you want to try and do is reduce, in your own mind, the narrative arc down to several key bullet points. As long as you tick them, you're still retelling the same story, essentially. You're just telling it in different ways. As soon as you remove one shot, you've essentially told the story in different ways because you've chosen to withhold certain information from them. So in this three-minute version, this is all information unwithheld. We have these scientists. Then they get attacked by zombies. There's actually a Wilhelm scream in there for those that know what that is. Then there's a news report on the roof who gets attacked, so then the special forces come in, turn up and kill, attempt to kill the zombies, then they get mauled over themselves, and then we have this No Hope Left logo thing come up at the end, ready for the Resident Evil logo. So, we've got a small story, a science outbreak, like, they get attacked by zombies, it's on the news, so we get this um, association with um, contemporary media, and then the force is coming to save the day but they can't because there is no hope left and that is one of the themes of Resident Evil 6 so we tell this whole story of the scientists 
realising there's an infection, and then they get attacked. This was one of the first elements of the video that I said, hang on, there must be a way to tell this in a shorter fashion. You know that the moment you have to cut off minutes of a video, especially a, a video that's only three minutes long, and create a one minute 30 second version, some stuff's going to have to go. You can't just trim off frames here and there and eventually that'll get to a minute. That just won't happen. You've got to get rid of chunks. So what I decided to do, and what me and Jason worked on, Jason was the director on the project, was retelling this whole opening section in a cross-cutting fashion. So we have the zombies, we have the scientists talking about them, and then using intense colour grading, we can differentiate the scientists from these flash forwards, as it were. So we get a sense of the impending doom, but maintain the narrative arc of them uncovering that they're going to be attacked, or that the dead bodies are infected. So you can see there's a few flashes of images here. If I just bring this down. You can see that they talk a bit more, and then there's more flashes of them getting attacked. So we know that this doom is coming. More flashes. More flashes. And then that section ends on the zombie waking up. You can see in the original version, they go through their whole dialogue sequence and then we see two zombies waking up and then the doom happens. Whereas what we're doing here is setting out the before, the after, and then we end on the point that bridges them two scenes together. So we still get a complete sense of the whole scene. We've got most of the dialogue still in there, I think one of the lines has been taken out. But we have just squashed essentially one minute into 30 seconds. And it's considering all these different techniques you can use to maintain all of the same information. We could have said, let's just keep the scientist bit, but that doesn't have the same impact of the fact that everyone is in danger, and that was one of the main points, no hope left. So we couldn't get rid of that, we wanted to keep that bullet point, as it were. The second bullet point is obviously the relation with social media today, and showing that, again, no one is safe, and also using this fantastic bit of dialogue and... Um, scene in which the reporter, played by Lauren Shotton, gets attacked. We didn't, want that. we didn't want to lose that. So what we did was, again, we merged a couple of little bits. I cut down half the dialogue. I took the last 20 seconds, because the last 20 seconds is what really matters. In the long version, the whole dialogue thing... It's not necessarily imperative, but it builds up a sense of character, a bit a sense of awareness, and it has a um, an escalating notion. The way that she um, starts to give away or drop in all these different details, and then eventually she lets loose with the fact that she doesn't think that it's under control, and then she gets attacked. Sort of ironic. We wanted to maintain the irony. That was the main point. That was what we were getting out of there. In a 1 minute 30 second trailer, we don't necessarily get the chance to develop that, we just get a chance to show something. So we are showing her, saying that there's something not in control, but we also have, you can see in here, the dialogue, her dialogue, fading in whilst it comes up with the Capcom logo. So we've merged the title sequence with some of her dialogue, and then we still get her getting attacked. The final scene was a bit different. This whole sequence, um, when the cars all turn up, the cops turn up, and the zombies attack them and the zombies win, that's hard to narrow down because ultimately this is a whole dramatic piece. If you take out one shot, you take out either the zombies winning or you take out the police looking like they could win. The more you get rid of that, the less drama you have. You need conflict to create drama. So, if I took out a shot of the cops shooting, you sort of need to take out a shot of the cops losing as well, so you still get the same level of balance that was created in the original, but that's not exact because, though, for the most part, I would say that 80% of it is the cops looking like they're winning, and then the last 20% is the cops looking like they're losing. So, for every clip that you take out, 
you've got to take out like a uh, a fifth of the uh, the zombies winning, so that you still get the same level of balance, and and that's what it's built up on. So the zombies attack and come in. Um, so what I did, I literally went through and just took out some of the filler clips. So in the long version, you get these great hand shot footage clips like this with uh, TV fuzz over the top. I took out clips like that so that we also maintained a high sort of stellar production value um, without using the found footage concept and that was one of the main things that was killed off in the 1 minute 30 version. It wasn't imperative to the main bullet points of the story arc. It was an artistic flair which looked nice but when you were trying to be concise stuff like that has to go to an extent and you have to rely on the bare bones of your project. All these main like visual effect shots of like the zombie getting his head blown off, they stay. Because they're cool. I could come up with some pretentious reason as to why else they would stay, but the question is why should they go as well? That's also what you have to ask yourself. Why do some clips deserve to stay and why do some clips deserve to go? If you can come up with a reason, that's great. But then you've got to start being cross-comparative. Why should this clip go and this clip stay? Sometimes you see two clips are telling you the same thing, so get rid of one of them. Or get rid of both if the point is, is completely irrelevant to the whole story arc. You can see that this whole section is about a minute and 15 seconds. Luckily, because of the way we cross-cut the first section, we allowed ourselves 45 seconds here to retell the final minute and 15 seconds here. So we were essentially cutting away less from this final battle scene than we did from the rest of the whole thing because this main battle scene is the high octane bit that's meant to get everyone's blood pumping. So we, we still get them arrived and we get them shooting, we get rid of some of the found footage stuff, we reduce the length of the battle, we literally, that's the bit that took the main suffering. There's lots of riot shield stuff against the zombies, that stuff went because we still got the idea that they're doing it, we cross cut to some of the other people fighting, and then we show that actually, in that meantime, the other guys have started to lose. That is the main arc, because obviously they come, they arrive, they fight, then they lose. We just get rid of some of the fighting. So we still get the progression. We don't get the elongated battle. That's what we lost. And then obviously it still comes up with the end. Shots like this. They, th this sort of shot, you can't really reduce because the shot is that length because that's how long it wants you to realise shit. Excuse my friend, sorry. Oh my god, the zombies have won, and now there's no hope left. You're on that moment, so you can link it there. The length of that shot was an editorial decision. If you get rid of that, you lose the effect that you were going for in the first place. So shots like this take huge precedence over the rest, and if you need to keep the length down, then, then you can start trimming frames away from the rest of it. Also with the music, um, which was composed by Christopher Hansen, who works on some of the music for my films, um, he's a fantastic composer. Um, you can see that down here. This was originally composed the 1 minute 30 version. What I did was isolate different sections that he did so that I could beef it up for the director's cut version. The 1 minute 30 version was the priority, so that's why we got him to compose for the 1 minute 30 version instead of the director's cut. And you can see that what we've done here is just loop certain sections over and over again. So we essentially create our own loops from his music. And then the points where the music changes, we can line them up with whatever dramatic points we want. For instance, the moment this zombie attacks the cop, and, you, and that's the first time you realise, actually, the cops might not win here, that's when the music kicks in. nice dramatic music um, and obviously it lines up to a similar place here except we don't get the battle so it's less of a shock but we still get we still get that impact of the music you can see here it, it really gets loud and then it builds up and builds up and builds up it still builds up here because it's it's just creating a sense of awe if that makes sense and then we drop ready for the title and then we've got this nice little cheeky after clip shot and this is one of them clips that could go but we cut down enough that we left it in because it cuts back to the main action and we just see this zombie strolling around.
we thought that would be fun. It's the world inhabited by zombies. Zombie cam, as it were. And that's in the elongated version as well. The director's cut. Then applying, even going from 3 minutes to 1 minute 30 is hard. Taking 1 minute 30 down to 30 seconds is even more difficult. Because then you know some stuff is going to have to die here. Some of your content, you're going to have to kill your babies, basically. It's perhaps easier for me because even though I was on set, I wasn't responsible for all the shooting. So it's easier for me to kill the babies because they're not my babies. When you're working with your own material, like I was with Husky, it was really hard for me to kill some stuff because I knew every motive behind everything. But what I had to do, obviously, as the editor here was say, this doesn't work. We we could go because we still get this sense from it because I'm looking at the footage afresh. Um, and if me and Jason agree, great. If we don't, then obviously that's fine. We create an artistic blend um, to create a final piece. We're all working towards the same goal. It, it, it works out either way. Um, but it allows us to both to be more critical, perhaps. So when you then create a 30 second version you suddenly realise you've actually gone from a 3 minute version not from a 1 minute 30 version but from a 3 minute version down to a 30 second version in one adjustment step so what we did we took the original cross cutting concept that we created in the 1 minute 30 version and squashed that down even more so we still get the cross cutting we still get the images with the intense color correction cutting between that and them talking and then we get the bridge clip of the zombie waking up we still get a sense of that this one is obviously perhaps a bit harder to follow but the 30 second one is all about conveying the tone and atmosphere of the game because at the, at the end of the day this is a game advertisement if we can convey that in 30 seconds that's great we keep the main narrative story arc in place, the bullet points that we were discussing, but some stuff has to go. So we just want to create an overall feel. So we restricted it down to perhaps, I think, two clips, two dialogue pieces from the original dialogue, and then it cuts straight to Capcom. Then there's no reporter. So we lose a sense of the freedom that we had with the longer versions. <coughs> Sorry. We lose a sense of the freedom that we have with the longer versions, but in its place we've got something that is a very different animal entirely. This is a presentation of thematics and content rather than a complete narrative story arc and trying to make a valid social point if that makes sense. So we keep the main dialogue so we get the sense of the story arc that people that we've seen the longer version can relate with, people that haven't will be just pick up on the visuals, and that is scientists. Scientists are getting attacked. Isn't that bad? The zombies are waking up. If you take nothing else away from it, nothing of the dialogue and the discussion of the uh, virus, that's fine, because you've you've seen you've seen it very crudely unfold that these zombies are waking up, or these dead people. They wake up, then they become zombies. Then we rush straight in with the people attacking. We don't see who the zombies are attacking. The reporter scene is gone. That's one of the casualties. That 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 died because ultimately, self-contained, that is its own scene. You can't get rid of scene one. You can't get rid of scene three. Because these are the main two points. This middle point, plot point two, is great. It's fantastic. But if you got rid of plot point three in place of that, you're left with the zombies waking up and a reporter getting killed. Great, but it doesn't quite have the same scale that you get from this all-out battle between zombies and cops. Look where the zombies are attacking him right at his door. You get the sense of claustrophobia and battle. Everything here is really close. There's no wide shots, really. Apart from the establishing shots here, early on, there's no wide shots. Everything is really close, really tightly framed. That was one of the editing decisions that I made to make sure to try and use them. Hide the wide shots for the end. Every shot is filled in.
Some of the, obviously some of the clips don't ed cut together so well, you can see that in the one minute version, every cut is a hard cut, it cuts from one clip to the other. In the 30 second version, we added some fades to blacks, so that we get a sense of time evolving, um, and time going on further and further, without um, actually having to spend that time showing these events unfold. So the, the blackouts add a sense of time progressing, and you can see that it does get slightly darker. Um, compared to when they first arrive. And then the final fade out from the black is this long shot, the wide shot when you realise the devastation that you've just seen because at the moment this is an all out battle, it's high octane, it's fantastic, it's exciting, it's thrilling and then you're like, oh my god, what I just saw there was the cops losing. Which leaves you one place to go, bam, title sequence. So. That was Dan Allen's and Jason Wright's trail of thought in creating the three different cuts of the Silent Studios Resident Evil trailer. If you just watch this without having watched the trailers, that's cool. Make sure you go and check out the trailers and subscribe to Silent Studios. Hopefully this was useful to some extent. If you have any questions of um, how I did certain things, if you want to look at how to consider the sound design for for a scene like this. Um, interesting thing is that some of the zombie sounds didn't come out amazing, so a lot of these zombie sounds in the final trailer is me making zombie noises and I just changed the pitch and um, of them so it sounded like different zombies and then I overlaid loads of different zombie sounds that I'd created back in, so if there were credits I could probably give myself a zombie 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in terms of sound anyway. Obviously these zombies are all fantastic. Um, thanks to Silent Studios, obviously, and their fantastic production team. So go and check out their stuff. Um, hopefully this was useful and an insight into the editing process, not necessarily the initial construction, but the way we take that initial edit and create alternative cuts of it and identify on which points to carry forward. Um, so thanks for watching it, and I'll see you guys soon with a brand new uh, video and tutorial.